Hey folks, how you doing? Papa Joe here. Josh the Trucker has subscribed to your YouTube. Subscribe to you on YouTube. Thank you, Josh the Trucker. I uh, click over to his YouTube thing and uh, I look at who he subscribed to. Then I click on this run hard and get paid. Couldn't help it. First one jumps up is truck stop hookers. And that was by uh, in the morning. Yeah. I had stopped that was run hard and gets paid. He's been out here seven years and he's the most knowledgeable person on YouTube. And he says, I know that makes a lot of y'all man. No, it just makes you look like a bull. Uh, cause there's a lot of us out here that, uh, have got a lot more time than that and we don't know it all, youngin. One of the things that, uh, gets me, oh, and Josh, thanks for subscribing if I didn't tell you. That's cool, man. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the videos. Go to the library about trucking. You learn a little bit about trucking. Uh, as you see, there's a long list of libraries go in there. They're accordingly to what it's labeled. One of my things about uh, these YouTube truck drivers, there was one, uh, the little guy trucker. Uh, then there's a guy out of Canada. I forget his name. But uh, these folks get on YouTube and they can make interesting videos. That Josh the Trucker, I started watching a few minutes of that truck stop hookers just see what he had to say. And not a whole lot. And he said that a bunch of us religious guys have got the girls on speed dial. Really? How do you know this? I'm a very religious individual. I do the best I can to live in a Christ way. I do my best I can to, to set an example by the way I live and speak and act and whatnot. And most of the Christians I know do. Uh, now you said in your video that uh, You've only seen between five and ten of them out of here in the seven years you've been out of here. And the first couple of times you wasn't even sure what was going on. If that's the case, how do you know that we have any of these girls on our speed dial? I do have some girls on speed dial. My wife. My two daughters. Yeah, they're there. I just click it, boom. And if you called them a prostitute, would have serious problems, and you couldn't handle the old man. Trust me. Uh, that's the kind of nonsense that drives me nuts. The little guy trucker, and uh, from what I've heard, I still ain't watched his videos. So I am not talking from experience on his, but I've talked to several, the post, you can read the comments, and the whole point is, is these guys get out here, they're uh, barely even getting dry behind the ears, and they're going to tell the world how to go trucking, going to tell you how to get paid. Just had a question today from one of my new subscribers, and uh, he asked me, uh, I think he was talking about Little Guy Trucker or somebody. Bragging about 700 miles a day. And this old boy was questioning that if you could legally run 700 miles a day. There are some of us that have ran a lot more than that. 
but then you throw that legally word in there. Now that's going to depend upon what part of the country you're in. The farther east you get, the harder it is. If you're out west where the speed limits are 70 and 75 and 80 miles an hour and you're not in a 62 mile an hour truck, then yeah, you can. If you're in uh, a 62 mile an hour truck, do the math. 682, and that's if you average 62 miles an hour, which you will not do. Uh, my truck runs 70. And I do let it roll off the hills when I can. So that's 770 just off your 11 hours times 70. That ain't going to happen. Uh, you've got traffic, towns, scale houses, you know. So no, you're not going to make that. You might get close, but you're not going to make it. If you have a 72 or 75 plus mile an hour truck and you're out west, <clears throat> if the speed limit's 75 and, uh, and 80, and yes it is 80 in some places, and you're hammering, yeah, you sure can. I mean, if the speed limit's 80, like out in West Texas, you've got, what is it? almost 400 miles of 80 mile an hour speed so you know if you're running 80 five hours you did not got that 400 so now it drops down to 75 and you still got six hours on your books so yes you can do it we used to do it more often than we do now uh, myself I set a goal of between 650 to 700 miles a day. Uh, now that I'm in a little bit slower truck, I don't average near like I used to. Uh, that W9 that I drove before I came over here, well, before the rock and roll actually, because I did the rock and roll between this and boat hauling, that truck would run, I don't know, I had it up to 85. And it still had more left. I didn't try to push it past that 85. What other one did it, man? I had, to, I had an agenda. And uh, that truck, it wasn't a problem to average 700 miles a day. That was normally when I was coming back. Hauling boats, you don't want to run 70 and 80 miles an hour hauling boats. Uh, you want to keep that speed down because the boats are wrapped. You blow that ramp off and get it tear it. Now you're gonna be sitting somewhere on the side of the road, a ramp or something, with your ladder out and your tape, and you're fixing this stuff, and that can be a nightmare. And I can tell you now, you're a lot better off to slow down, because all that great time you're making running fast, you're gonna lose it sitting on the side taping stuff up. So uh, when we had our boats on, we usually ran between 60 and 65, closer to the 65, because most of us just couldn't run 60 and 62. Ain't nothing more aggravating than to watch Swift pass you. Now, I can't do this. Now, then you have uh, CR England pass you. Oh, hell no. Warner pass you. No. So, uh... You did run just enough to keep those companies from passing you and saving face. There's a little bit of joke to it, but a whole lot of fact to it. So, uh, and you got to know your boat and these, uh, you know, your loads. And these boats would move on you periodically. So, uh, you got to know your loads. 700 a day in the right situation is not a big deal. Uh, to do it consistently every day all over the country, no, it's not going to happen. Uh, you get on over there onto the East Coast and stuff, which I haven't been there in quite a while, literally years. Uh, back in those days, the traffic was so bad that you wasn't going to do it. You wasn't going to average 700 miles a day consistently. So, uh, 
And like I was saying, one of my pet peeves about these YouTube drivers are they all want to tell you how great they are, how good looking they are. And we already know I'm the good looking one. Point blank, period, end of discussion. My wife told me I was good looking and my wife don't lie. Uh, but they give out a bunch of false information. I've done some of the trucker tapes on videos on that stuff, you know, where they go trying to quote laws. And they're full of bull. Uh, the one hand asked me about uh, CBs and all that stuff, and one of them even uh, has made the comment that if you're out there without a CB, you're a fool. And all this, that was in one of my, not on one of my videos, but in one of the groups I'm in. Now, I totally disagree. Because I've been out here with the CB. And I watched it go downhill. Drastically. I bet you a dollar to a donut, it ain't got much better. Now, a friend of mine here a few years back, he still runs one. He was on 19. And uh, he called me and had to tell me, he said, dude, slept all night in a major truck stop. Not one voice came over that CB to wake me up. Back in the day, you couldn't have shut him, shut him up on there. So, uh, but back in those days, you used to hear the same nonsense that you hear nowadays on these YouTube channels. These people get told this stuff in their safety meetings and in their orientation. And the safety guy or whoever's telling them this stuff is trying to intimidate them and get them to toe the line according to company policy. And then the drivers come out here and want to tell you, oh, it's a law. My favorite one is that DOT says that you have to log five miles an hour under the speed limit. Really? That's not true, boys and girls. If that was true, this electronic log wouldn't work for the damn, now would it? And even back before the electronic log, it still was not true. That was a company policy. If you ask DOT, anything about how to log they're going to tell you log it how it happens point blank when you get up and get ready to leave you log it when you leave you log it when you stop you log it you keep track of your miles and regardless how long this took through the day and how many miles added up those are what they want on that scale or on that logbook page. That's why they like that right there. So, uh, <coughs> then you got the ones that are going to tell you how they towed off the DOT man in that scale house. And I told him. No, you didn't. All the years that I have been out here, one time have I seen a truck driver go off in a scale house. Now, I was green as grass, too. That would have been... I guess I started in 91 or 92. I forget, but that I was still green as grass. Uh, literally less than a year in a truck. Still driving for J.B. Hunt. Still running out of the Kansas City mud hole. And I seen a guy go off, and it was quite obvious that he was wired for sound. And uh, they let me go, and they wanted to talk to him. They had me on a BS logbook violation from my ignorance, and they knew that it was just a typo, so to speak. But they was having fun with me. Because they could tell I was new and I was scared. And I was new and I was scared. They, they was right. But uh, they don't go off on these cops. And they don't go off on DOT. And then you got the guy that's going to call the federal marshal. 
I caught the federal marshal on them. And boy, in no time, there was a federal marshal out there and he lined them out and I drove away without a ticket and he's still back there chewing on them. Now, it don't happen that way. Look up federal marshals and see what their job are, their job is, what their job descriptions are. It is not to babysit truck drivers. Truck driver don't even come into it. Not even the least iota. When they start a story like that, they're lying. Point blank, they're lying. Uh, they're going to tell you all these great things about leasing their trucks. And I have yet to see any kind of a real honest deal on leasing a truck from a big company. I ain't seen one yet. I'm not saying it ain't out there. I'm saying I ain't seen it. That being said, now I was with Prime. We did not get along. I did not make money. But I have ran across some people that just sing their praises. Oh, we just made a fortune. I'm happy for you. Uh, if you stop and think about it, the whole ordeal about leasing one of those trucks from a big company is the company wants to make money. Wow, really? And if they finance you that truck or whatnot, they still want to make money. 99% of the time, if you will be careful and read the fine print, you will find out that all that has happened is that company has shifted all of the cost of that truck from them onto you. Now you have to take the risk. You have to take the gamble. And there's not a whole lot of money in there for you. That's just the honest truth. Point blank, that's the honest truth. Uh, I, I'm not, like I said, I've not seen anybody yet. If you just are got to do the uh, owner-operator thing and just eating you up, for one thing, you don't want to do it when you got six months under your belt which a lot of these companies really push their new people to get it as quickly as possible. Man, I didn't give me nothing sweet to eat while I was in there. Bummer. Uh, because the driver don't have enough experience and knowledge out here to know what he's getting into. So they'll, they do that. I have seen drivers out here with all the major companies that think that they're an owner-operator. You ain't nothing but a glorified company driver, is all you are. Can you set the speed of your truck? No. Can you take that truck and lease it on somewhere else? No. Can you paint that truck? No. Most times they don't want you to do nothing to their truck their truck. Uh, I could go into some other stories. Uh, the email does work on here. You can email me and somehow. And if you want me to keep stuff private, by all means, ask me and I will. I do get emails. <clears throat> Some of them confirm the stuff I have said. Some of them tell even worse horror stories. Got one today, but they asked me to keep it private. But, uh, it's nothing but another typical company that eats you up you know, burn you out 
and throw you away. And folks, that's what these companies will do. Whatever it takes. You know? Uh, I tried telling a good friend of mine. He just... Our dispatcher, who's still a friend of mine. He was real good at reading a driver and playing them. And he kept telling Megan, Oh man, I need this done and I know you can do it. You're one of the few. You're the only one. And all this stuff. And old Megan's head would blow up. And he'd jump in there and take off. And uh, guess what? The first time that he couldn't make it, he got through under that bus. Imagine that. And that set them off on a bad course. But now he's very upset. And I was wrong. Well, you was wrong to be trying to do what you was trying to do. Uh, this dispatcher friend, he already knew that if he ain't asked me to do any of that crazy stuff, I'd laugh at him. No, you know this can't be done, and I ain't doing it. But no, I ain't doing that. The thing was, it was before the electronic logs, but not much. Some companies already had them. The big boss he wanted us to run legal and he wanted our fuel to match within an hour or so and uh, he wanted us to run legal now after the fact we found out that he was brokering a lot of our freight out to uh, one of the big companies and he was getting a big kickback from it we suspected it then, but after the fact, I found out it was true. So he's wanting us to run legal, and he's holding our toes to the fire. Well, then we were doing the trade show freight, and sometimes it gets pretty sensitive there. And uh, when it's time sensitive, if the company don't hold up their end, they can lose millions of dollars quick, fast, in a hurry. We're talking big bucks quick. Well, when that would happen, he would all of a sudden not want Swift. I'll say who it was. He'll want Swift to not get all those loads. Now, all of a sudden, he wants to put them on us, the company drivers, and want us to bust our ass to do whatever it takes to get them there, illegal or not. And we had two or three drivers that was stupid enough to do it. And then there was only about seven of us all towed anyway. So there was another four of us that would say, no. If we can't break the law and lie on our cheat, lie and cheat on our logbooks for us, why in the world would we want to do it for you? Oh, well, so you can get more miles. Right, and then next week, you're going to give all the loads to Swift again. And we're going to get screwed until you're in a bind again. Until Swift can't pull it off. And then you're going to want us to come bail you out again. So you're going to hold us on the back burner. Try to starve us out. Give all the freight to Swift. And only cut us loose when it helps you. That's how a lot of them are. Period. I don't care what name you put on the door. That's how a lot of them are. Uh, that's like with this company. They've made a few new little rules. And, oh, well, no, well, we, nobody's going to fire you over that. Really? Then why did you make the rule? Well, you're one of the better drivers. We won't. Really? Until you're mad at me? Then when uh, you get mad at me, all of a sudden all this stuff gets pulled out of my pile? Oh, well look here and here and here and here. You're out. Don't trust them, people. Don't trust them. 
they have one thing, one agenda, and that is their bottom line, not yours. I've said it a million times, and I'll say it again. If they go preaching to you about how they are family oriented, it's family oriented for their family, not yours. No. That's just a plain simple of it. You are nothing but a hot body in a seat. You are nothing but a piece of equipment. I don't care who you're driving for. Unless you're driving for yourself, then maybe your wife likes you. But all these trucking companies out here, you're nothing but equipment and you can get replaced pretty damned easy. And don't think for a moment that they won't use you up and throw you away. I've told you the story before, I'll tell you, and then I'm in this. I was still new. I only had two or three years under my belt, like a bunch of these guys on here. Buddy, I was setting the world on fire. Uh, 85 mile an hour truck, and I was tearing this country up. Big paychecks for what I thought I'd get paid by the hub. Uh, racked up a few points, too, on the tickets. And all of a sudden, I find myself where I have one ticket, three points away from losing my license. Actually, I think it was two points. I'm driving for uh, Shot Farms out of Advance, Missouri. Guy's name's Pumpkin. That's his nickname. He's no longer with us. And Shot Farms has fell apart. That typical after the main owner dies. <coughs> the son and daughter had a splitting of the ways, and each of them took some of the trucks and renamed shit. Got by the yard, and I said, Pumpkin. I said, one more ticket, buddy, and uh, I'm out of the truck for a little while. You gonna teach me how to dispatch? He said, nah, I don't need another dispatcher, but you go flip hamburgers till you get your license back and come on back. We'll do it all over again. I said, really? He said, yep. I went five years without getting a ticket. That right there, cause I had three kids at home they fed. Uh, yep, I went five years. That is a mentality. And it's a mentality of more than one company. It's pretty much all of them. So, with that being said, I am uh, gonna sign off here. Y'all remember, God loves you, so do I. Have a blessed day and be careful. Good night.